Hello everyone! Welcome again to the EM6P Studio special edition for the Science Week. I recall that the theme of this third edition of the Science Week is complexity. I am Yusra Bubagyura, a student here at EM6P, and we have with us today Professor Lex Paulson. Professor, thank you for accepting our invitation. Thanks for inviting me. Could you please introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Lex. I am executive director of the School of Collective Intelligence. Uh, I've been working here at UM6P uh, since 2018. And at the School of Collective Intelligence, we study the art and science of collaboration, especially to solve complex problems. Thank you, Professor. And indeed, collective intelligence was a major sub subject within this edition of the Science Week. Professor, could you talk to us about a complex concept of of this field of expertise, which is collective intelligence, into simple words for the public. Sure. Um, think about what we had to do as a society during the pandemic. There was not one person who could see all of the problem and have all of the expertise needed to come up with a solution. It was a medical problem. It was an economic problem. It was a political problem. And so this was exactly the kind of level of complexity that required many different kinds of people with diverse expertise to come together. So just generating a vaccine. Um, I'm vaccinated. I hope you're vaccinated. We benefited from collective intelligence. Right, from the ability of doctors and engineers to work together with people who could deliver and store and the politicians who had to uh, fund and, and distribute these vaccines is a great example of a kind of a complex problem that requires the large scale organization of expertise. And so the science of collective intelligence tries to look at what do big groups do well um, what do, when do they fail? And how can we reorganize the groups that are doing poorly in order to bring out better results? Sometimes we get uh, a one plus one equals you know, 0.5, but we want to try to get as a one plus one equals three. How do we organize groups so that everybody is able to contribute their best and that the group as a whole does something that even the best individual couldn't do alone? It couldn't be explained in, simple, in simpler words, Professor. Thank you for the explanation. How could you discuss the significance of complexity, which is the theme of this Science Week? And how do you think, is the, what is the importance of treating such subject for future leaders? Well, uh, you say use the word leader. I think it's absolutely critical because we're stuck in a situation where problems like climate change, are becoming exponentially more complex in the sense that the world supply chains, the food chain, um, uh, our, our economies are more and more interconnected in less and less understood ways. And so um, it requires us to be faster, to be smarter, uh, and to be more resilient. And our institutions are all designed in the 19th century, the early 20th century, maybe 50 years ago. And so leaders have to understand how to uh, respond to this growing complexity. And our opinion at the School of Collective Intelligence is the best way to respond to a complex problem is to call on the wisdom of a diverse group. And diversity is the key to unlocking complexity because only by combining different perspectives can all of the individual factors of a complex problem be properly analyzed. Um, and this diversity in how we think, diversity also in what we see, how we aggregate information, how we interpret that information, and the talents that we have to solve a problem. So this is all the different ways in which diversity can help us solve a complex problem, whether it's climate change, a pandemic, economic inequality. Um, this is why leaders need to be inventing new forms of collaboration, because the old forms of collaboration, where experts were in a tiny room, separated from the people, trying to come up with a good policy, that won't work anymore. The world is too complex now for old-fashioned, elite-driven, um, uh, exclusive methods of decision-making. We need large-scale, organized, structured forms of intelligence to solve our hardest problems. Thank you, Professor. And uh, today we had the launch of the book of Professor Lax, which is Cicero and the People's Will. Professor, could you talk to us about your book? Sure. So Cicero um, is one of the most um, famous statesmen of uh, a time in history called the Roman Republic. So this is about 
two, set, two, 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 2,000 years ago, and the Romans, we inherited so much from them, and this was a really important moment in Roman history when their political system was under enormous stress because of the rising complexity of managing, in their case, the largest empire in the history of the Mediterranean world. And so Cicero was trying to find a way of stabilizing this very complex world. And what I write about is that the Romans had some incredible talents. They distributed power through the system. This is a time when most, um, most communities were ruled by one uh, pharaoh, one emperor, one king. And the Romans had a rotating system of power. And this was very unusual, but it allowed the Romans to be more resilient, more creative. They were competing with each other to find more and better solutions to problems. So the Romans lost a lot. They lost a lot of battles. They, they were not always successful. Successful. But what was remarkable is that they were always able to bounce back. They were always able to take the knowledge that was around them and integrate it into their system. So the Roman Republic was one of the most interesting examples of collective intelligence in all of human history. My book is about what happens as that system finally uh, is, it passes a critical moment and, and comes into crisis in a time of civil war where people like Julius Caesar, uh, Cleopatra, uh, Mark Antony, these are the people who are defining what will happen in Roman politics. Cicero is fighting that battle. He ultimately loses that battle against, uh, that battle of ideas and politics against Caesar. But 18 centuries later, with the creation of the American Republic, with the creation of the French Republic, Cicero's ideas come back and define what it means to be a citizen of a democracy today. Thank you, Professor, and congratulations for the launching of your book. And as a last question, could you, Professor, uh, give us two words for the Science Week? Two words for the Science Week. Further, faster. Thank you, Professor, for your time. And this was the special edition of the UM6P Studio for the UM6P third edition of the Science Week. See you in the next episode.